Hi everyone! In this video, I'll be showing a surprisingly easy way to cut complex shapes into glass using a homemade mini sandblaster and sandblasting cabinet. I haven't seen anyone else cut glass in this way, and I think the result speaks for itself. Now here is the mini sandblaster I've used for this project. I have a whole video about making this and using it to blast fossils out of rock, which I'll link to in the video description below. The basic idea is you take a little metal tube available from any hardware store, file a hole in the side, and poke it through a tiny container, with the hole facing up. You use some hot glue to seal this into a vinyl tube, which then connects to an air compressor blowgun. And with about 60 to 100 psi in the compressor, the container can be filled with sand and easily blast away rust, stone, or glass. The most important thing about using a sand blaster is to have really good breathing protection. Not just an ordinary dust mask, but at least a full-size respirator like this one, or better yet, a sand blasting cabinet like this, which will keep all the dust contained inside and far away from your lungs. I made this from an ordinary plastic storage bin, which is perfect because it's transparent, allowing you to see inside. And it also has a foam gasket along the inside of the lid, which ordinarily makes this bin watertight. And for our purposes, it will not allow any of the dust to escape. You should be able to find a similar watertight storage bin in most supermarkets, at least in the US. To turn this bin into a sand blasting cabinet, I drilled two big holes through the lid for my arms, and I used a hole saw to do this. The best way to drill these holes is to run the saw backwards, so that the teeth don't actually do much cutting, but instead melt through the plastic by friction. Alternately, if you don't have a hole saw or even a drill, you can take something like a soup can, heat it up in a fire, and just melt through the plastic with the rim of the can. One more hole is made in the bin itself to attach an air filter. This one is a universal filter I picked up off the shelf at my local hardware store, and I secure it to the bin with a little bungee cord and a scrap piece of plastic. A couple rubber bands and a stick would accomplish the same thing. Now you need to be able to reach your arms into the box without allowing any dust to escape. So for this you'll need some long rubber gloves. I started out with these yellow ones, but they were a bit too short and it felt like I had little T-Rex arms as I was trying to do things inside. They did work, but it was much better once I switched to these full arm length gloves. I purchased a few rubber couplings made for PVC pipe, and once you slip them out of the metal sleeve and flip them inside out, they press fit into the holes I've cut and give me a great way to push the gloves into the box, and then secure them on the outside using rubber bands. You could save maybe $10 if you didn't purchase these rubber pieces and simply taped or glued the gloves to the box directly, but they really add a lot of convenience. The total cost for this setup, not including the air compressor, is about $60, and if the plastic eventually gets damaged by the sandblasting so that the bin is no longer transparent, you can keep the lid and all the fittings, just swap out the bin. The final touch is to drill one more tiny hole for the sandblaster tube to slip through the lid, and we're done. Now my first attempt at cutting glass with a sandblaster actually worked right away. The trick is to cover whatever part of the glass you want to keep with a layer of electrical tape. You can use two layers if you want to be safe, but it really only takes one. This is a little bit unintuitive. The sandblaster can cut all the way through a solid piece of glass, and yet one flimsy layer of tape is enough to protect it. The trick to this is that the electrical tape is very elastic, while the glass is hard and brittle. Think of it like this. I can take a hammer and use it to break a solid brick. But this same hammer, swung with the same amount of force, can be caught in my bare hand, as long as it's not against something solid. 
This is because my hand can absorb the hammer's energy over a longer period of time, and so the impact is not as destructive. When the grains of sand hit the electrical tape, it absorbs some of their energy slowly, but the glass, being rigid, can't deform, and so it chips. Each piece of sand chips away at the glass until we've cut all the way through. And this is the result of my first attempt. But I've cheated to make this look like a better result than it is. I sprayed this with a clear coat, because before that it looked more like this. Not very transparent at all. Once I had cut through the glass, all of the excess sand was bouncing around inside of the tube, scuffing up the inner surface and making it opaque. This also developed cracks in several places. You can see the top of the tube actually broke right off. I wanted a result that looked more like this. No cracks and no scratching on the inside of the tube. All we have to do to get this greatly superior result is take one more step in our setup, that being to fill the tube with wax. Ordinary paraffin wax from a melted candle, or canning wax from a grocery store. Once the wax is molten and poured into the tube, as soon as it hardens up, we can wrap the tube again in electrical tape, and it's ready to sandblast. This time, the wax prevents the sand from bouncing around inside the tube, and it also provides internal support, so the glass doesn't develop cracks under the tape. I found it also helps to cut through the glass using several shallow passes, instead of blasting all the way through in one go. By taking shallow passes, it forces any cracks that do form to follow the path you are going to cut anyway. It only took about five minutes to finish this cut, and about three refills of sand. I use a little scoop to refill the sand blaster with sand that is already in the box. Easy recycling. Once the cut is finished, I can remove the electrical tape, and a little bit of heat will melt out the wax. But before doing that, I decided it would be safer to break apart the inner spiral piece so it wouldn't be tangled and possibly damage my final result. Then I use a heat gun, and the wax comes right out. Woohoo! Yeah! To clean up any remaining wax residue, you can heat a little bit of vegetable oil in a pot, and let the glass piece roll around in the oil for a few minutes. The wax will dissolve, and then the oil cleans right off with soap and water. And we're left with this. Pretty amazing result. It would be even more amazing if, instead of electrical tape, I used a computer-programmed vinyl cutter to cut custom images and logos into a vinyl sticker to act as the sandblasting template. That would give us some interesting possibilities. Now, I should mention my inspiration for this video came from two other channels. The first was Nate and Callie over at The King of Random. They were playing with a sandblaster in a recent video and blasted all the way through a glass bottle. That's where this idea finally clicked for me, as I had already made this mini sandblaster in an earlier project, and I knew it could etch glass, but not until then did I think about using it for actual glass cutting. I made a full-size sandblaster, which I also tried, but the mini one actually works better. A lot better. Maybe because it's more focused. It also uses much less air than a full-size sandblaster, so definitely go with this. The second channel that gave me some inspiration was Cuttermaster, who has a great video demonstrating a more standard glass-cutting method to cut spiral shapes into wine bottles. He uses a diamond cutting disc and soldering iron, which gives an awesome result. But it's also very meticulous, and certainly takes a lot of skill to pull off. Using a sandblaster, as I've done here, is quick and easy, and also lets you get sharp inside corners like this, which I don't think are possible to pull off with standard scoring and heat fracturing methods. By the way, this method does work on larger glass bottles. It just takes a little more time to carve through the thicker glass. 
Anyway, I hope this video is useful, and I look forward to seeing others of you put this method to use. If you do give it a try, post a clip to YouTube and send a link to nighthawkvideoresponse at gmail.com. Be sure to leave me comments below, I still read all of them, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.